You're watching New Car Spin. I'm your host, Brian, and this is the new Aston Martin DBX for the first time in Dallas at Aston Martin, a Park Place dealership. And with me is Jeff from Aston Martin. Hey, Jeff, Hello. how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. So, uh, I noticed a few things about this vehicle that are really cool. I'll show you from this way. Yeah, exactly. So, this is a glass B pillar to give a flush aerodynamic look and feel to the vehicle. And if we open the passenger door, you'll notice that these doors actually wrap underneath the vehicle so that you don't get any dirt on your pants or anything else when you get out of the vehicle, but it creates a very good streamlined look. To add to that streamlined look, we don't have any trim piece near the window. And if you already noticed, the windows are frameless. It's pretty cool, but Jeff, maybe you can explain a little bit more. Yeah, it's uh, part of the, one of the things that we do at Esmire is we really take time and effort for the aesthetic look of the car. I mean, for, for years, we've always, people have always said we have some of those elegant, beautiful cars on the road, and it's those little attention to detail and notes I like that. So we try to, we use the uh, golden ratio of the laws of thirds to help design our cars, and uh, we try to minimize the number of cut and shut lines on our vehicles, where your eye, you know, your eye like hiccups over it, it's a little bit of speed bump as your eye continues to go around. So we try to work in the functional aspect of the vehicles and minimize that as much as possible. Hence, like you said, the door being tightly wrapped all the way down to the bottom gives that infinity pool look, or the removal of the waistline finishers because it just sticks out to your eye, and you don't really know it until it is pointed out to you. You're like, oh, that completely makes sense. That's why it's so clean. I mean, it's amazing in person. It's yeah. just like a piece of art. You want your eye to continually flow around the car with there's less interruptions. And it just is aesthetically pleasing and it's gratifying to your brain and you have no idea why until someone goes, oh, that makes sense. And let's talk about the wheels. Yes. This is, so this particular design we have here is actually called a ribbon wheel and it looks fantastic. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, um, yeah. It comes in three different colors. There are several other wheel options you can get, but standard on the car, 22 inch wheels all the way around the car. Nice. Six piston caliper fronts, four piston caliper rears, uh, whips, double wishbone suspension on the front and rear. So with the off, with the unimproved road capability and the road capability the car offers, it handles wonderfully. Very nice to have on these Yeah, I've heard. I've uh, recently been to Dallas, and so I haven't found those unimproved on that. There, I haven't met a pop or two. Oh, they're around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then if we work our way up, we have the suspension system, which is sitting at about 90 to 95 millimeters of drop. Now, the way this car is sitting here, it's completely exhausted all the way down, sitting on its yeah. wheels. Now, um, but because of the triple chambered suspension that we have on the car, when the car starts up, it starts in GT mode. So let's call that zero, if you will. Right. Okay. From there, it can go up 20 millimeters in sport and in uh, terrain mode, and then an additional 25 in terrain plus mode. So 45, 45 millimeters going up. Okay. On the way down from GT, it can drop uh, 15 millimeters down into sport mode, and then on its own, when you put it in the mode and you start to go with speed, it'll it has the ability to drop up to 30 millimeters all the way down up to an additional 45 yeah, the, the other way for uh, sport plus mode to get to get as low to the ground as possible lower that center gravity down so with a top speed of over 175 miles an hour nine speed gearbox a zero to 60 of 4.2 seconds wow twin turbo 4.0 v8 engine 542 brake horsepower 516 pound feet of torque it's got some skew. that's cool it's can we a, check it out let's take a look at it yeah you want to see the engine yeah So the total car weight is 4,940 pounds, which for an SUV is pretty lightweight. Now there is the wow. the horsepower of the car, 4.0 liter V8, twin turbo engine, hot V. And so this is a pre-production vehicle, just this to is. that clear. So yes. there's probably going to be some sort of covering on here, maybe? Could be. Okay. It's, uh, not, We're I mean, not sure. Yeah. Okay. I, I know uh, like around this area, you don't want covering over there because the uh, the air to get rid of, to circulate around that hot feet, keep it cool okay. as much as possible. Okay. But when you open up the bonnet, the two things that stick out to me is one, these yeah. massive torsion rigidity bars, so there's not a lot of flex. And second is these massive shock towers that you have. Oh, yeah. So all the little wires and cables that you see going to it, this car has what's called EARC, Electronic Anti-Roll Control. And I'd love to 
demonstrated to you if we had the drivable one here. The electronic anti roll control at speeds levels itself out going through turns so you don't get that top heavy pitch. And when the, we have the, uh, the drivable one here and we give people test drives in the car, it is a roller coaster ride. It is a lot of fun. Oh, I bet. Yeah. And uh, I'm looking forward to that day. But for now, I'm just taking in all of this. I noticed it's, how low the engine is. I mean, you have a really low center of gravity in here. So if you notice that the, the axle of the front wheels, the whole engine is behind the front axle, which helps its weight distribution of the vehicle. So that, that V8 is just mashed back in the back of the, um, the engine bay. Wow. And it's one helps the, the weight its lowest possible, so it helps the center of gravity keep low. It's pushed past the front wheel, so it's a front mid mounted, almost 50 50 weight distribution vehicle. Um, it's, it's, they really did a great job. Now, it's important to say, having said that, this vehicle does not share a body with any other car. Some of our competitors, they are on a Q, they are direct competitors for this vehicle on a Q8 platform, on a Q7 platform. This is bespoke. It doesn't share a platform, not only with any other Aston Martin, but no other, no other vehicle in the industry. So we are not, um, we are not restricted by hinge points, attachment points in the vehicle. So it's all Aston Martin as far as the design and the body and the interior work and everything on that. So it's not carrying over anything from a Vantage or... There are, there are pieces, parts, electronics, the electronics are shared between that. There are, you may see it's like the door poles will show some similarities. The, um, the uh, steering wheel is going to feel similar for some, but as far as like the structure of the car, it doesn't show a platform. It's, it's not a version of any. No. Okay, no. that's cool. No. That's really cool. Well, let's uh, go around the back and yeah. check out the uh, trunk, because it actually has a trunk. The boot. The boot, yes. Let's talk about this design, too, because it's, it's impressive. Now, I can't, this is probably one of my favorite views of the car. Uh, the, the unique thing about this is, no matter, as you walk around, the front, it's low. It doesn't look like a big, bulky truck SUV. -ish. It almost looks car up front, which is why people were thinking it was a crossover, which it is not. Mm -hmm. As you walk your way on the side, the angles, the, the, the slippy foot, the kips on the side, it's, it's constantly changing as you walk around. Then you get to the back end, and it looks massive. But yeah. if you're going to pull up behind this thing, I think it looks like a, like a hulk of a car, and it's really not. Yeah. Um, However, being of Aston Martin's very first sport utility vehicle, we've incorporated the sports car back end tail lights onto the vehicle. It's great. It's great. Biggest batch we've ever had on an Aston Martin. Biggest grill we've ever had on an Aston Martin. I do really appreciate the ergonomics of how they made it not just look chunky, but actually gave it some depth and some uh, in and out to it, so it looks stylish. And they still minimize all of the lines. Like, you're not seeing bumper lines all over the place and different Great point, yeah. areas and everything. It's just a clean piece. Yep. It's, it's amazing. I think on the back end, though, my favorite part is actually this right here. It okay. sounds weird, but uh, if you notice, there's no rear windshield light. Right. And so, no, this is not a wing for downforce. Like, we're not trying to make it a, a sports car. What it does do is it actually vectors wind underneath it. Ooh, and yeah. so, at speed, it'll blow off what's on the back end. Now, I heard about it, and it wasn't until I went over to the UK that I actually saw it. We took one of these, and we went out, and we were blasting through puddles, blasting down dirt roads, and the red car soon turned tan and dark brown all the way down the sides on the back. We got out, we walked around, and I just happened to look over, and I noticed the rear windshield and this part of the deck, back deck right here was completely clean. Wow. And the, this all around here was just muddy, filthy, oh, you know, and yeah. it was neat to see the physics in play, I'm like, holy cow, that really does work. That is really cool to see. I mean, it was like literally mud up until there, but just the wind coming off blew it right off the back. It was fascinating. It was neat to see that. It's very convenient. You don't have to worry about that. Because you see that sometimes SUVs, and it's a dry day, and the wipers fall over. You can turn them off turn them off. And then yeah. we can figure out like, where the switch is looking up. Yeah. It eliminates that problem. Now, in the vehicle <laughs> itself, the boot of the car, you, we do have the ability to have it open by itself, uh, depending upon which uh, body kit you get. However, on the inside, 22.4 22 cubic feet of space okay. in the boots. With these buttons here, do automatically drop down the back seats in a 20, or excuse me, in a 40, 20, 40 split. So you can do one, you can do the other, you can do all of them. So is this the first all-wheel drive Aston Martin? Yes, it is. And is this the first Aston Martin with folding rear seats? No, it's not. No. Okay. So the Rapide, 
our mm -hmm. previous four door yeah. car, right. the top half actually folded down. Okay. It's, they're, they're on uh, pilot seats, they folded down so you can actually get, I'm not going to say plywood, but you could get longer things in the back if you needed to. Nice. So, yeah. so what we have here is a, uh, a real functional trunk. Uh, so, you, yeah. It's, it's amazing. Yep. Because you'd think from the outside you'd have a limited space or the trunk wouldn't open all the way. But, and to your point, I found that when showing people the car, I have to get people in the car to really see the spaciousness of the interior. Because you look at it from the outside, where we have the lines of the doors, you're like, oh, the back end looks small versus like mm -hmm. being six foot three. I can actually sit in the driver's seat, position it comfortably, get out, and comfortably sit behind myself. Like I've got inches between my knees and the front seat, which is. That blew me away at first. Comfort, Comfort is what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. Especially in an Aston Martin, absolutely. What, we're going to get inside, but okay. what I did notice too was how big yeah. the doors were. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah? Um, yeah, because we opened them up over here, it's like really impressive. So, granted, this is pre production. Yeah. So, just the mass between these two spaces is about a, a good foot. But what really impresses me is, Brian, if you move the camera over here, you'll see there's a strut here on the B-pillar to the rear door. So, as Aston Martin Heritage has, we, our doors don't just open out flat. They open up at an angle. Those are called swan doors. Now, in 2018, when they brought this to uh, one of the very first iterations they brought it to America, people were going, where's the swan doors? Because that's Aston Martin. So they actually went back and they reconfigured it. So when all four doors do open, it does have a slight angle up. Like a wing. Almost. And the reason for that is to get over the high curbs, curbs that you have in the UK. Well, there's some high curbs around America, too. So. Oh, yeah. Well, let's get inside. I guess I'll go to the driver's side. Please, that's your seat. Now, it's worthy saying, as we get into the vehicle, if you, can, if you notice, and let me see here, it's difficult from like, this bit right here, all this perforation that you see, it is, and it's also on the bottom of the seats, and it's also on the back, like right at this point here. That's called broguing. We're the only car manufacturer that offers broguing in a car. It's a very nice attention to detail from the British because they're all about elegance and that craftsmanship and that, that uh, detail. We're the only one that does that as well as the interior, the headlining of this happens to be leather. Oh, it's now, very nice. The, uh, so we, we uh, standard with the vehicle is, uh, excuse me, with the vehicle, many standard options. We did away with the whole, okay, here's your base price for entry to get you in the door, and then we're going to tack everything else on, and by the time you're done, your end product is going to be well above what you were thinking about spending coming in. There are a ton of standard features on the vehicle, like the 22-inch wheels, like the 800-watt 14-speaker sound system, like we start off with the caithness leather. We don't even bother with the bemoral because in our research, we, uh, we've never spent as much time researching any vehicle putting the time and effort to develop of a car as we have as this one. We looked at our two main competitors, the Bentley Bentayga, the Lamborghini Urus, and we sought them out for two years. What were options were people getting? What engine sizes were they getting? What were the lease rates? What was the price points? The whole gamut. And that's how we came up with the development of this car. So seeing what people were getting, we decided, you know what? Forget it. We're not going to a la carte people to death. We're just going to give them. So like blind spot indicators, 360 degree cameras, adaptive cruise control, um, pedestrian walking uh, alerts, the, I mean, a slew of stuff is just boom. And it's all the safety stuff that people, autonomous braking, all the safety stuff that people want in those packages. Get it out of the gates. Nice, nice. And I just want to grab that camera real quick and show from up close what we have here. We have a, a drive control system and then we have all these options. So real quick. Yep. Uh, Power for the radio. Okay. Lane departure. Okay. Um, automatic start stop. Everybody turns that off when they get in. Exactly. Parking sensors. That is your camera setup, okay. which is fantastic when you drive. You can actually look front, back, or 360 around the car, and sometimes at the same. Um, there's your hazard buttons. Those are the modes, your driving control modes. So when you get in and the car starts up in, um, in GT mode, mm -hmm. this is how you either raise it to terrain or lower it to sport. Okay. And this is your access modes. So the car can lower up to 50 millimeters and come back, and then hill descent control. Nice. Now, yes, you may have seen something that looks like this in other brands as well. 
The uh, Daimler owns 5% of non-voting shares of Aston Martin. Why not use a brand partner who has a bulletproof system? Yep. Therefore, we can spend all of our time, attention, and detail on the aesthetics, the design, and the suspension. Ma- material. Ex- yeah. That makes Aston yeah. Aston. Definitely fit and finish because it's all over this car. It's amazing. So we actually have the standard steering wheel uh, in this one. The sports steering wheel does come a little bit more flat-bottomed. Okay. And and they are not steering wheel mounted paddles. They're no, on the they're column. on the column, which I, as a driver, I like. I, because I, they don't move. I don't have to chase them on the steering wheel. They're in the same position. I know when you pre-position your hands to go into a turn. I actually prefer that. The uh, the electronics. It's a nine-speed gearbox that you have. The e diff that we have on the car shifts gears at 120 milliseconds. It's very responsive, and the paddles are a great feature. Normally, people people often ask me. I, I've never used them before. I don't know how to use them. Just like riding a 10 speed bike, one way goes up, one way goes down. Very simple, yeah. And um, do we have the key here? We can't start it up, obviously, but uh, can can I turn it on to see what the gauges look like? The key is in there. If you give oh. me a second, I can go get it. Okay, yeah, we could do yeah. that. What I'll do is turn on the parking lights and see yeah. what it looks like on the house. Here. Parking lights. We'll see if that does it. Oh yes. So the light goes all the way across like an arc. You have a brake light. Oh, cool. This is the redesigned Aston Martin key, different than the previous model, uh, a little bit more bespoke form. And again, it reads the uh, electronics to the car and goes in. Okay. So I'll let you do the honors, actually. Well, uh, so if you want to hear the car start up. Now, this is a pre production model, so mm-hmm. it's, it's going to sound more throaty than this. Right. Uh, the, and well, as you see, the, the gas, there we go. We've got to have, kind of give you an idea of what it all looks like. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely appreciate the the subtleties of it. I think what we'll do is we'll hear it and then we'll we'll call it a day. All right. That was awesome. Good. <laughs> cool. Good. Thank you very much, My Jeff. Pleasure. I really no, appreciate thank it. Thank you. This is, um, I've spent a considerable amount of time in this car, and I would never have thought I would say that it's one of my favorite cars on the Aston Martin lineup and drive, but it really is. This thing, for what you expect out of an SUV and then how this handles, <laughs> it's, it's, you feel like you're five again. Um, I, bet, I bet it's going to be really cool. When I get behind the wheel, I want to feel that way too. Uh, for sure, for sure. And we're in Dallas at Aston Martin uh, Park Place. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you later.